The Raspberry Pico RP2040 is an ARM Cortex-M0 based microprocessor equipped with two cores. In this video, I'll show you how to write code for the Raspberry Pico that uses a second core on the processor. Using the second core enables you to make your Pico projects twice as powerful by using a completely separate thread of execution. To talk about doing multi-core programming, we first need to define what the word core means. A core is a functional unit on the processor capable of executing program code. By having multiple cores on a processor, you can execute multiple segments of code at the same time. Whenever we write code for the Raspberry Pico, for example, core zero, the first core, executes the code. The second core is on standby, never doing anything. Here, you see a depiction of two cores. Each core is separately running its own code completely independently. They have separate program code and separate memory space. There are cases, however, where the cores can share program code and memory space. Sharing code is not problematic, as fetching code is a read instruction and it does not create a race condition. However, sharing the same locations for data is problematic as it creates a possibility for a race condition to exist where mutual accesses to the memory is not assured. So if the cores aren't supposed to share memory directly, then how do the cores communicate? Well, the masterminds at Raspberry Pi figured this out and created two separate FIFOs or first in first out structures to act as a mechanism for communicating between the cores. Only one FIFO is writable by core zero, and only one FIFO is writable by core one. This way, no core is ever writing to the same location at the same time. In this example, core zero has some memory it needs to communicate to core one for some kind of processing. Instead of writing that memory directly into core one's memory space, which could introduce a race condition, core zero uses its writable FIFO to push that data to core one. Core 1 does its processing and then uses its FIFO to get that process data back to Core 0. Core 0 could have been executing other tasks while it waited for Core 1 to finish processing. This process of using FIFOs to pass data around prevents weird cases where Core 0 is reaching into Core 1's memory or vice versa. So, with that being said, let's write some code to make this happen in C. Okay, so here we are in my Linux build environment. Um, if you haven't watched my previous video on how to set up a CMake build environment for the Raspberry Pico C SDK, please go watch that. It'll make this video much more easy to digest. I know I keep beating this up, but I do have to say I could not have done this tutorial if I didn't have the Raspberry Pi Pico C SDK document in front of me the entire time. Um, they do a very good job of documenting all the functions that I'll be using today in the tutorial. So after this tutorial, go give this a read and see what other trouble you can get yourself into. Anyway, back to the code. Um, so over on the right, we're going to be writing the code that's going to go onto our Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, so this is a multi-core video. So the first thing we need to do is initiate the second core. Uh, and the way we do that with Raspberry Pi Pico is first we have to pound and the pico slash multi-core.h library. What that does is it includes the library of code that Raspberry Pi has produced to enable us to do multi-process programming on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Next, we need to tell the Raspberry Pi Pico to launch code on its second core. And just to prevent any confusion, um, the second core is called core one, just so you're aware. So the code starts, this code will start in core zero, and the rest of the code that we launch on the second core will be in core one, just so we're all on the same page. Um, we're gonna call this function and we're gonna call it on the function name that's going to get ran by the second core. And we're gonna call that second core code. And then we have to define a function. We're gonna define it as a void second core code. And then whatever we write in this area is going to get ran on the second core. So that was pretty fast. Um, what we need to actually do now is write something to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the blink LED example, but we're going to have the second core tell the first core when to turn the LED on and off. And the first core is going to actually turn the LED on and off. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to use the FIFO we talked about to push data to the first core every half a second. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to create a while loop. And then first we need to sleep for half a second. And then we're going to push data into the first core. The way we do that is with multi-core FIFO push blocking. And we're going to push the command uh, GPIO on. So that means that every half a second, the second core will put the GPIO on data, which is just the number one, into its FIFO to the first core. And then we're going to copy this code 
and paste it. And then we are, instead of using the GPIO on command, we're going to use the GPIO off command. That will tell the processor to turn its, uh, its LED off. Awesome, pretty straightforward. Okay, so now that we have the code set up for the second core to execute, uh, we need to now make sure we actually have the blink LED happening. Um, so we need to do that by running GPIO init on the LED pin, which we have as a pound defined up top. Uh, we need to do GPIO set direction to LED pin, making it a GPIO output pin. And then forever while one, we need to get data from this FIFO that came from the second core, right? We're gonna create a variable called command and the command is going to equal multi-core FIFO pop blocking. What the blocking means is that it will actually sit here and wait, like no more code will get executed until something comes out of the FIFO. So we will sit here and wait for half a second for the FIFO to push data out. We will receive it here and it will get stored in this command variable. And then once we have the command, we are going to do a GPIO put on the LED pin, and we are going to set the value to command. Okay, that's it. So what's gonna happen here is we're going to launch this code on our second core. This second core is going to wait half a second and then put data onto a FIFO, wait half a second and put the other data on the FIFO. We're gonna set up our LED pin while this runs, and then we're gonna serve forever and we're going to pop out one of these commands and we're gonna put it on the LED pin. Okay, so let's build our code here. Just like before we used to do, make dirt build, CMake behind it. Oh, we have to export our uh, SDK path first. Then we CMake, and now we make. Oh, it's, sorry, I got an error here. It's a uh, sleep MS for milliseconds. Great, and now that we have our code figured out, we're going to take our compiled program, so it's multi.uf2, and put it onto our Raspberry Pi Pico. And as you can see here, our Raspberry Pi has now rebooted running our code. The first core is running in this loop, and it's pulling data out of that FIFO and putting it onto the LED pin. And the second core is every half a second commanding the first core to do something. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, come back for another video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.